for the one who likes us for who we really are, not for what we can give or for what we do. So I can say you have to have a good personality, a good heart, a good head on your shoulders. I guess that's my ideal kind of woman. You know? Like how he said, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to find people in this business that you may or may not know whether they're really looking at you for who you are or if they're looking at you for being a I normal mean, human being or if they're looking at you as being a black street boy, you know, so just gotta be careful. Nick seems to be the heartthrob of the group. I d no, that's, that's, uh, I, I wouldn't take that for granted. He's got a million web pages devoted to him. Yeah. I, I, he's blonde, he's the only one with that blonde brown hair and those bright blue eyes. You know, I don't think, you know, at least the baby. I mean, beauty is something that women, as they always say, looks are, are secondary. I think you have to find somebody who, talking about femininity and this and that, um, you have to find somebody who compliments your bad sides. You know, somebody who can lift you up uh, and you can compliment them as well and, and help them. I mean, not like compliment you like, oh, you're great at that, but I mean, you know, <laughs> someone who can, who can kind of balance you out, you know, because your negatives can be their positives. And, their positives can be your negatives. The guy would want, you know, a bunch of screaming girls waiting outside for you. I mean, we love it, love the attention. They called you, your cab driver a bitch when she was out with a car. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Why, what'd she do? That's not good. No, she didn't do anything. Yeah, she just she went. Really so she uh, it's very hard to have relationships when you're in the public eye. Especially if if, um, if you're surrounded by teen hysteria, um, because I think then your girlfriend becomes a target to uh, to like hostile or uh, fans. I mean, ever since the Beatles, when um, John Lennon got married and he had to keep it a secret that he was married, um, it's, it's been a part of um, a pop culture really. The fact that um, boys and bands are meant to have girlfriends. It helps the boys and helps their. Uh, helps them to grow and know that they're doing the right thing and what the girls want them to do. And I think that it, it's also good for the girls because it gives them some um, good role models because the boys try to be a clean cut and, you know, a good role model for teenagers. We've been talking a little bit about um, groups like the Spice Girls, for example, mm -hmm. but in the beginning of their career, they said that they were actually a bit younger than they actually are. Do you think that's all right to do that? <laughs> about lying about your age? Yeah, I mean, that's one thing I that, you know, it'll catch up to you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's only going to because you're only going to get old. <laughs> exactly. What's the opposite of passport? Your birthday? You, know, you kind of yeah. can't avoid it then. <laughs> What's your birthday? Yeah. Yeah. I think the image is, um, it's not as calculated as it is with um, certain other boy bands you could mention. Well, our ages are, and we're age of 17, here are 26. 13. No. Yeah. Yeah. Six foot tall. <laughs> yeah. so. But is that, do you think that's uh, something that management tells you to do? Like, uh, it would probably be okay if you were three years younger. Or do you think it's something that the artists themselves choose to go out and learn about it? Um, I think for a marketing aspect, of course, it's to your benefit to remain young. Um, I know they, they, they all the kind of the same, they look kind of different um, in, in the time of tradition. But uh, you, you do feel they all have got separate individual personalities, I think, with, with Backstreet Boys. And uh, you know, I, I, I think, um, I think there, there is a big hip-hop influence in their style of clothing, and, um, and also to an extent in the dance routines as well. I think that, uh, that they're, they're obviously not um, trying to be the next take that. They, they, they feel that perhaps more street than, than take that. Although at the same time they, they are nice boys from good homes who sort of um, grew up singing in church. Um. You, you seem to be a bunch of good guys anyways. Um. So... Uh, <laughs> we, uh, we just try to be ourselves and uh, we try to stick together and be friends with each other and keep, you know, keep our heads on straight, you know. And, uh, just try and do the right thing. Do you feel you have a responsibility towards your audience? For example, uh, not going out saying, hey, everybody take drugs, or, I mean, how, how do you cope with that? We've never, you know, professed to be perfect, you know, that we are flawless, but I mean, 
when, when you're in the public eye, especially when you have a, a young fan base, um, you just have to be aware of what you do and realize that people are looking up to you and, you know, just make the right decisions, be responsible. I think the fact that the kind of boys next door is, is a very strong factor in their appeal. I can tell you they are as nice as they seem, and their families are nice, and they're hardworking and wonderfully talented. Fun to be with. Uncluttered. Somebody will call somebody else and go, hey, let's go out tonight. You know, let's go do this or let's go do that. And, and you do, you know. I mean, we're friends, for sure. For sure. They are always polite. I, I've tried to make them mad. You can't. They are so polite and so kind and so appreciative of what they've been given. They're always shaking hands. They're always having a smile. The guys have grown so fast. It's just so many things have happened so, just happened so fast. So um, um, I'm just glad that we happen to have a lot of level-headed people. I mean, that's, that's one thing about us, you know. You know, you know, what you see is what you get. How does it feel being out there and being part of it all? Was the second time around the best, as I said? Uh, I think it was an honor for all of us to be out there. Like I said, to be nominated twice, and uh, we won the same award which we won last year, and uh, which we couldn't pick a better award. I think the MTV Select Award is the one that all the viewers choose which video. So I think it's a deep being, honor. Being, being a strong, very visual product, you can you can reach a lot of punters very quickly via MTV Europe. Um, yeah. We're not trying to target any audience right now. We just want people, when they hear our music, if they're driving in their cars, uh, listening to the radio, just to sing along and to like our music. The Backstreet Boys are more focused on their own talent. You know, they sing well, they dance well, they write, they, they're very talented. So I think they're just straightforward, like, here, here's our product, do you like it, and, and that's it. And, which is very admirable, I think. We just hate to make music, and we feel that they enjoy us for our music. And music's first. Yeah. They like our music. These boys, you know, should be and want to be respected, not just as, you know, just a, a, a pop group, you know, but as actual, for real artists, you know, because they are. The first album that, that came out in Europe, of course, was all done, you know, basically just by producers and writers and things like that, you know. Um, so there really wasn't, you know, a, a live musician scene going on for them at the time. Um, and then, you know, they recognized the importance of putting a live band into it. And now that the band's there, um, studio-wise, album-wise, um, there's talk of, you know, the, the boys, uh, I think, are, you know, contemplating maybe doing like a live album at some point. Um, because they want to showcase, you know, what it is that, you know, that they actually are really doing, what they sound like live, and that, you know, they're convincing, you know, and can make it happen, you know, that they're really out there doing it every night. Uh, the show tonight, do you have any fireworks or kiss no, or things? I think the fireworks that are on our show is us. You know, we, 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 play, you know, we try to bring, you know, not use special effects, you know, to lift the show. We use ourselves to lift the show, you know, to the, to the, the other level. Are you, you know coming to the show? So, you know, when you get there, and you'll see for yourself that it's very high energy, and you know, there's nothing fake about it. You know, we're all there. Yeah, it's just a live performance. Band, it's just some. It's a whole new level. A lot of energy. A lot of energy. They are different. Um, they're, they're, I mean, with boy bands in general, there does tend to be a generic type, but. Uh, with the Backstreet Boys, there there is something different. I think it's that it's where all these influences come together. Like they were into MC Hammer, they were into Boys to Men, but they also grew up with, you know performing in musicals when they were kids. And there's like an element of singing in church, um, so there's a gospel influence as well. They're obviously into soul and a bit of hip hop, so it all comes together. I mean, they they work with some some great songwriters, you know, but. As far as inside of the boys, they're all writers. They all have song ideas of their own, um, you know, that they bring to us and we listen to, and they're all getting into it, you know. It's, it's cool.
A lot of the rock and roll stars that we all familiar with, Chuck Berry and uh, the local groups in the past, the Temptations, the Four Tops, um, those type of groups were influential. Nick talked about them, they all talked about them. Um, and some modern day groups. Boys to Men were uh, their idol. Uh, they, they looked at things vocally, more or less vocally, because that's what they were patterning themselves to be as a vocal group. I think with Backstreet Boys, as opposed to a lot of other sort of manufactured pop bands, it seems, is that there seems to be less producer influence. So instead of being exactly mainstream, they seem to try and go out on a limb. And there's influences there from a lot of black artists, from old Motown stuff to even more recent things like Boys to Men, which they seem to have really absorbed and seem to go out on a limb to get that into their productions rather than going for a fully produced manufactured pop. Trends come around uh, as far as the fashion industry everything's going back to the retro 60s and 70s same thing with the rock uh, the alternative rock is a lot like the thank you a lot like the uh, the uh, rock of the 60s and the 70s so back in the day you had all the Motown singing groups and vocal groups and those were our our uh, you know influences so that's what we're trying to do and our music is it stems from all of what we grew up listening to, which is which has now become the Backstreet Boys sound. Constantly looking for material that would identify them as different from every other group, and they found those things. But they definitely carved a niche that is distinctly their own. If uh, AJ had wanted to quit school for this band mm -hmm. um, had you agreed with him uh actually we talked about it because he was having a hard time with the tutoring and i asked him if he wanted to be homeschooled or go for we have a, a thing in the united states he can go for a ged which is like you take a test when you're a certain age and you can get a diploma but you can't get into all the universities so he thought about it and he said no he's come this far he wants to finish mm -hmm. so it was his decision great support uh, AJ's mother was as a single mother was always there for um, AJ and Nick's mother and father made frequent trips from uh, Tampa St. Petersburg area to make sure that he was participating in all the activities a lot of sacrifices were made on all parts it's a really tough business and you better know what you're in for because there are long hours you're exhausted all the time if you don't work those long hours and you don't treat people with respect, you are not going to be more than a one-hit wonder. That's the way it works. Work, 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 work. To be a member of Backstreet Boys, you need to be able to, you know, do backflips and do splits in midair, and it's incredibly physical. Whereas to be an Oasis, all you have to do is just be able to stand still. So, I think um, being in the Backstreet Boys is probably incredibly hard work. Work, 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 work. work. Andy, oh yeah, there's an Andy in the words. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's the been third one. Mm -hmm. one back there, yeah, yeah, the two is getting mixed up sometimes. The other one. It's rather like being in a stage uh, production like Star Express or something. You have to, um, you have to be incredibly fit. Um, years ago, MC Hammer boasted that he had the, the physique of an Olympic athlete because of his dancing. I think it's probably the same for uh, Backstreet Boys. Uh, touring is intense. When you perform, you've got to be on. I mean. Failure is not an option. Performers go up and go on stage sick, not feeling good, but you have to go on when you've got to go on. The Tonight Show was, uh, there's, I don't know, there's something different about, because we've done TV shows in Europe and stuff like that, and I guess the thing is, I don't really you know know those shows or watch those shows so i don't realize whether they're like really great shows i guess i tend to in my mind go it's probably not really that big of a deal it'll be okay and then uh you come to america and you're asked to be on the tonight show and that's uh you know something you've been seeing all your life you know it's a it's a institute in america and now all of a sudden you're going to be on it and uh I mean, really, I'd love to talk to you about The Tonight Show, but about the only thing I remember was some guy standing in front of me counting down five, four, three, two, one, and uh, the next thing I remember was Jay Leno standing there going, hey, great job. I'm going, wow, I hope so. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Pop has really come back to America. We've kind of got like a little bit of pop R&B flavor, so hopefully 
they really you know they accept it here you've grown so tight you talk about experiences in europe i mean we've toured all over the world and and we've got a chance to to really mold ourselves into something very strong and something very very tight together so we're looking forward to just bringing it back home that's all that's great it's a dream come true being in this band is you know i think you know what pretty much every musician hopes one day they can be you know a part of something at this level i hope that they stay together you know because i love their sound i love their harmony their voices are beautiful and i think they're great together but because they're so young i do wonder i wonder if maybe they'll go their own separate ways there's always talk of that um but i know that if not all of them most of them will always be in music the backstreet boys it's very much a youth thing i can't imagine them still doing it when they're 35. I think um, because they are very multi-talented and very versatile, they'll probably just disperse into other areas. You know, from whence they came, really, like doing TV, doing um, theatrical stuff, um, movies. Who knows? Maybe solo musical careers. I think that they'll um, they'll be with us in ten years' time, but perhaps not at Backstreet Boys. Um, there are people who are romance you, saying that we can put a single act together, that you don't need all this. There's a lot of stress in managing five men. With different personalities it it's hard to keep people together it's it's not it's not an easy thing you're not looking at one individual you're looking at five different personalities that are beginning to have money and wanting to do things with the money and have it's 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 a balancing act that you have to continue to rebalance to stay cohesive and and you all have to all agree on one goal what's our goal where do we want to go what do we want to do and then when that goal's reached either we have another goal or we break up and this business is really hard to say. You hope that it's not going to go wrong. I think there's always a risk with boy bands that someone newer, fresher, younger is going to come along. That's always a risk. It's always a calculated risk. And no one can tell. But some of these bands have longevity, and Backstreet Boys might just be one of them. The, the amount of success they've had now is a, is a great incentive for one to stay together. So as long as they just stick around and do what they're doing, they'll be good. The time they've been together, they know each other, so it's easier to stay together than to start over. And I don't think that individual individual in the group has, you know, a, a, a single career on the horizon at this point. So I think it would be the smartest thing to do is continue the Backstreet Boys as the Backstreet Boys. I think there's nowhere to go for them but up. Got to get better and better and better and, and better and better and even better than that. I mean, as far as the future is concerned for this group, I know that, you know, the boys just, they're looking to, to keep doing this as long as they can, you know, and I mean, they're, they're loving what they're doing, they're having a good time with it, um, they're excited about what's going on in America right now, um, because they're finally, you know, bringing it home for them. I mean, for us to be doing a show in Tampa and playing to, you know, 3,000 or 4,500 people or whatever it was, you know, that's exciting. Um, coming coming home to Orlando and playing the House of Blues, you know, I mean, that's going to be incredible. And, uh, you know, the future, who knows? I mean, we're just going to keep doing this and keep trying and hopefully it'll just keep going and going. You're always going to be doing something entertainment wise, whether it's music, acting, singing, dancing, we're going to be up on stage one way or another. Nick was young and, and rambunctious and full of energy and willing to learn and a lot of fun to be around because he was playful. Howie happens to be my own personal favorite because his, uh, I was chatting with his sister the whole time while we were waiting on the video to be finished and um, she teaches music and she also uh, lives in this area and um, they're just very cool people and uh, I really like them a lot. He was the sweetest soul, i.e. soul of the group. Howie didn't seem to have anything that I could see as far as recreation. I don't know. Maybe a girlfriend. I don't know.
Kevin's the oldest. He's the one that looks like the man. And um, I believe his family's from Kentucky. And his parents are very soft-spoken and very nice. I like them a lot. Kevin was into weightlifting and bodybuilding, getting in shape. And he was the big brother of the group. AJ's the cool one. <laughs> AJ's always adorned and um, he's funky, man. I always, every time I look at AJ, I think New York. I don't know what it is, but uh, he just, he, he reeks of New York. I can see him just living in a penthouse, you know, up on the Upper West Side or something. He's a cool guy. AJ was always had something smart to say and, and clever and, and had a lot of good energy brought to the group. It was, it was, it was a more of a hip energy, a California thing that AJ brought in. Brian, he's my favorite voice of the group. He just, he has a voice like an angel. And Brian, um, we just found out that he's uh, undergoing heart surgery. He has a hole in his heart. So I mentioned that on the air. Brian came along who brought a lot more soul to, in the group, a lot more spirituality in the group. Um, oh my God, is it true that Brian's having surgery? Is he going to be all right? When will he be better? Will they be singing again? And blah, blah, blah. So I said, yeah, you know, he has like a, a six-week recovery time or an eight-week recovery time, and he'll be back and he'll be touring in no time. And so... Uh, they were definitely, we were concerned too though when we, when we first heard heart surgery, we hadn't heard any other details. But um, it's something that they say he'll recover from fine, so don't worry. 